Hi guys! In this video, we will show you the new Scanner Mini from Revo Point. You want to know all the details? Then stay tuned! Hi guys, welcome back! My name is Rui and this is the Rui Raptor YouTube channel. If you want to help us out, you can by giving this video a like and subscribe the channel. You can also help by joining our Patreon page or by clicking on any of the affiliate links posted below in the video description. So, it's not the first time that we do review videos of scanners from Revo Point. First, we covered the POP back in January of 2021 and in January of 2022 we covered the POP2. If you haven't seen those videos yet, check the video description below for the links. Now, Revo Point launched a new version, called Mini. This model is advertised as a blue light scanner that can output models with a point distance up to 0.05 mm and a single frame precision up to 0.02 mm making it ideal to scan small objects. The Revo Point Mini uses binocular blue light technology to project ultra-high resolution structured light. And this is the package. Inside the box we can find a bag with several things inside. Next we have several USB cables. All these are to connect the scanner to different USB connections. Then we have this small tripod. As usual, we have a small bust to test the scanner, an adapter for the cell phone, and finally the scanner. At the back of the scanner we have the connector, the status LED, and the start and stop button. At the bottom we have the plastic piece to secure the scanner on the tripod and at the front we have the sensors. If we compare side by side the new scanner with the POP2 model, we can see that the new one is a bit smaller in size. And this is the tripod. This one is actually very handy. It looks small but it can be extended by pulling the top and also the feet. With every scanner from Revo Point, we get a bus to scan and test the scanner. The Mini is no exception, but in this case, the bust is a lot smaller. And inside the bag we have several markers, blue tag, a black plastic, and this can be used as background while scanning, a calibration pad, and a small booklet. Although we have received the calibration pad, the calibration software is not yet working with this scanner. The standard kit also includes a small turntable, powered by a small charger-like power supply. This turntable comes already with some markers on it. To prepare the scanner is very simple. All we need to do is slide the scanner on the tripod like this. And connect the cable at the back. Then we connect the cable to a USB 3.0 connector on the computer. And then connect the power to the turntable. And that's it. As for the software, Revo Point includes a scanning software called RevoScan. It's very easy and straightforward to use. At the left, we have the scan button that opens up this screen. Then we have the guide button that opens up several links for instructions and tips, and the support button. At the top, we have the preview button the new scan button and the button to access all the models that have been scanned already. At the bottom 
we have a small settings button. And here we can change the language, the folder destination for the project. We can choose if we want to enable the hardware acceleration and the restore default settings button. When selecting a new scan, we get a new window with a few options. We can choose the scan name. By default, you have the timestamp. You can choose the destination folder, select preset settings. Then we have the accuracy, fast scan or high accuracy scan. Then it's the scan mode, features, marker or dark. And finally, the texture, no color or color. Since this model that we are testing does not have an RGB sensor, we cannot choose the color mode. OK, now we are at the scanning screen. Before starting the scan, we need to adjust the light with the slider. The red area means that it's overexposed. We can also select the remove plane so that the surface underneath the model is ignored. At the top is the distance indication. We want to place the scanner at a distance from the model where we get the excellent mark. At the right side, we have the timer. This is just a countdown for the scanning to start after pressing the start button. We have it at zero so the scanning starts as soon as we hit the start button. The green area shows what the scanner is actually capturing. It's also possible to pause the scan and change the orientation of the model so that we can capture all the angles of the model. The software can recognize it and match the orientation. When done, we hit stop and then complete. The next step is to fuse the print cloud. We can set it up to start the process when we select complete. And here is the model. We can save it as is in PLY or OBJ format, or continue with the process and do the mesh. Here, we can choose to run the mesh with automatic settings or use our own settings. Once the mesh is complete, we have the finished model. If we like the result, we can then export the model in STL format. And this is the model loaded on the Slicer software. It turned out very nice, and it captured all the details of the hair, ears and mouth. We then tested printing this model as is, without editing the scanned model and check how it would turn out. And this is the result. Scanning a test model is one thing. So, how will the scanner behave with our own models? That is what the next tests will let us know. As a first test, we tried to scan the small doll. Because there are lots of black areas, the scanner will not be able to capture those. For these cases, we need to use something to act as a coat so that the scanner can capture them. On the market, we can find these. They were designed specially for scanners. And there are two different versions. One where the coat will be on until we wash it out, and a second version where the coat will be on for a certain number of hours, and then will automatically evaporate. With the coat on, the scanner was able to scan the doll much easier. Scanning is sometimes not an easy task, and in some cases it might need a few tries to capture everything perfectly if we don't want to edit and fix the scan with another software. In this example, the hair was not captured correctly. On a second try, we were able to capture the hair much better. Also, the details on the dress were captured nicely. Next was this second doll and because it has no dark areas, we were able to scan it without any coating on it. 
And this is the result of the scan without the coat spray on it. Next, we try to scan this small model. It has lots of small details on it, and the scanner was able to capture them as well. This is as it came from the scanner. No editing was made to it. Next, we tested an even smaller model. This one is a nice test, because it has very, very small details. The scan result shows that the scanner was again able to capture all the small details including the head and the flowers on the dress. Again, no post-editing was made to the scan. Here we have another small model. And this is the result. Again, look at the small details captured by the scanner. And here is one more. This one only failed to capture the small glasses, which are made from a small wire. The rest looks very good. The chin area was fused with the book, but this was because we didn't scan that area enough and with the right angles to capture that specific area. With this model, on the other hand, we had some issues. Because of the blue light, the red areas are not seen by the scanner, and so it failed to capture those red features. For this model, and even though it doesn't have any dark areas, we need to apply coating on it to be able to scan it. We also tried scanning this shiny ceramic model. In this case, the scanner had no issues and it captured both parts of the model perfectly. We also tried to scan this small mechanical piece. This one is more difficult to scan, not only because it's dark and needs coating on it, but also because the design will repeat itself while turning and that will mess with the tracking while scanning. Since this model is too small to add markers on it, we used other parts to act as markers, and this way help with the tracking. And this is the result. For our final test, we have this model. We used this one for our review of the POP2 scanner and we wanted to see the differences between the two scanners. And here is the result. At the left side is the scan from the POP2 scanner, and at the right side is the scan from the MINI scanner. Both turned out very good, but the one scanned with the MINI shows more detail. If we take a closer look at these areas right here, we can see the difference in the details captured by both scanners. The Mini was able to capture the details much better. And that's it you guys! These are all the tests we have done with the new Mini Scanner from Revo Point. So, what do you think about these results? Feel free to leave your comments in the video. We will see you guys next time. Bye!